The views and opinions expressed on any programme are those of the producers and or the persons appearing on the programme and do not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of FRC Media, Bristol Community College or the City of Fall River. Welcome to Spindle City Straight Talk. I'm CJ. My co-host is not here yet. He uh, is tied up in a little bit of traffic. He had a meeting this morning. And you know how those meetings are at Government Center. Lots of bull swinging around. People got to get their biohazard suits on. <laughs> so let's uh, get started right off the top. As you may or may not have noticed over the weekend, the distress is ramping up over this March 6th ballot question. It's an override. It's not an override. It's a debt exclusion. It's an override. You know, everyone has an opinion on what it is or what it isn't. And the problem is, is that they're all just about right. There's just little bits and pieces that are missing. A Proposition 2.5 override formal is an override of the tax levy of two and a half percent which is permanent a proposition two and a half override debt exclusion is limited it's limited to the term of the bond whether that bond be 10 20 or 30 years it's limited to the term of the bond and that is why it's still a prop two and a half override the only difference is it has a time frame on it and this is where the, the question comes in. And we have people out there who are being paid substantial amounts of money to spread the propaganda that they need to spread to get this question passed. And we know this. But the problem is, is that the propaganda machine is meeting resistance when it's meeting the public who's saying, we're voting no. So I'm not exactly sure where this is going to go, but I'll tell you now, it's definitely not going to be a good scenario. <coughs> Excuse me. Hey, we're number one once again. Yay, we're number one. We're number one. We're also number two. We're also number two. And I, I'm not talking about bodily functions here. The City of Fall River School Department was listed as one of the worst, the absolute worst, and the second absolute worst when it comes to student restraints. The, the Doran School, which is down on Columbia and Fountain Streets, I believe, had 253 restraints. Imagine that 253 children had to be restrained by faculty and staff. And the Mary Fonska School, which is over on Wall Street, uh, Quarry Street, that area, the old, where the old small school is located, had 244 restraints. Now you may say, well, that just shows that the children aren't behaving themselves. But there's more to it than that. When these restraints happen, people can get injured. Your child can be injured. The teacher can be injured. The faculty can be injured. The staff can be injured. And that's why these are important enough for the state to track, where they're following up on that. Now, in all fairness, the Doran School includes a separate cluster of students with behavioral disabilities. And so that may be what's causing some increase in restraints at that school. Now, oddly enough, we have a school called the Stone School, which is a specialty school for emotionally impaired students. And that school's faculty, staff, and leadership have the hardest job in the school system, and they do amazing work with very challenging students, yet they're not at the top of the list of restraints. So what are they doing right 
that these other two schools are doing wrong? That's my question. Now, they say the strengths performed at public schools are drawing particular scrutiny from the Disability Law Center. Well, does that mean we're going to get hit with another lawsuit? DLC, the Disability Law Center, is committed to reviewing this data thoroughly and utilizing it to inform decisions about where to spend abuse and neglect monitoring and investigation efforts. The Department of Elementary and Secondary Education is also reviewing the data with an eye towards working with schools to assist in reducing the use of restraints. You know, I worked in mental health and in corrections for a while, and I'll tell you now, restraints was always looked as a last-ditch effort. Now, is that, what, is that what's happening at the Fonska School and the Doran School? Are these last-ditch last ditch efforts, and that's what's happening here? I'm hoping that that's the case, but then again, you know, I, I can never tell. Um, yes, Dave, uh, one of our viewers, Dave, uh, he says, but it's the school that makes them behave. Correct. <laughs> the schools are, are too. And, and, you know, but our faculty have to have some leeway in how they enforce the rules. And do you want your child restrained? As it is, we have children which are being videotaped and photographed, and I don't even know if video and photo releases have been signed. And I'm not saying they haven't. I'm just saying I don't know if they've been signed. And we see that a lot with this question coming up. But this is how we have to handle this. You as a parent need to get involved. Get involved with your child's school. If your child is restrained for any reason, find out why, what caused the restraint, what type of restraint was used, what necessitated the restraint, was any less restrictive means of control utilized? Or did they just go right into restraint mode? These are things that you as a parent need to ask. And you have to be on top, top of this with your child because if you're not going to take concern over what's happening to your child, nobody else is going to either. So remember that. Now, this is really sad, absolutely sad. I'm going to read the headline from the Herald News. Uh, no vote on Durfee Override will set off emergency process. Superintendent Matt Malone does not want to consider the possibility that four of the voters may reject the $58.5 million debt exclusion necessary to pay for a new Durfee. First off, misinformation, fake news, fake news, fake news. It's $98.5 million. Don't say it's 58. It's 98.5. That is the bottom line. It's $98.5 million. 58 is if, if the city comes up with $40 million. Big if. That's projected. That's not a guarantee. And the amount of the bonds aren't even set. They're wide open. So here's your fake news again. This is what I mean by they're trying to get this question passed using any means possible, including lies, cheats, and deceits. We're not talking about what ifs. We're talking about going forward with a successful vote on March 6th. That's the problem, Superintendent Malone. The school department and the city administration should have created a plan B option. That is piss poor management. There's no guarantees in an election of anything. And you're saying right here, you're not planning for a what if. You're just planning that you're gonna, it's going to pass. But what if it doesn't pass? What option do you have available? Not much of one. Because you have 120 days from February 14th to notify MSBA that you want this money and that you're going to move forward with this project and you have the funding for it. 
According to the Herald News, if Fall River residents decide against the New Jersey project on March 6th, their decision will set into motion a series of emergency meetings and contingency planning to try to salvage the product. And that's the problem. These emergency meetings and contingency planning should have been done prior to this going to a vote. It should have happened prior to this even being considered for a vote. The plan should have been plan A, perfect plan, the question passes, no problem. But if plan A does not provide it, this is what plan B will be. And if we can't do plan B, this is what plan C will be. And if for some reason if we can't do plan C, then plan D will be that we can't do the project, or plan E will be that we can't do the project, or plan F will be that we can't do the project. But all of that planning should have been done. And this is why we say this is piss poor management. Piss poor. There is absolutely no question about it that this is poor management. And the city's financial team is to blame for this, as is the mayor. They did not take or consider the possibility, because they didn't want to consider the possibility, that there was an alternative way of funding this project. They lock themselves into one option. And if that option fails, they don't know which way they're going to go now. This planning should have been done already. But no, if they had done that, then they couldn't use fear mongering. And, you know, I got to call out the Herald News on this. Shame on the Herald News. Very big shame on the Herald News. The Herald News is working like WSAR, We Suck at Radio, okay, is doing to scare the people in Fall River into voting yes. This is not a yes vote for a new school. This is a yes vote for higher taxes. Remember that. And it's not $58.5 million. It's $98.5 million. And it's not even $98.5 million because it's $181 million after, after interest. And that's what you have to consider. The fact that it's not being considered also scares the hell out of me. And you have to ask yourself, what is the city going to do? What is the city going to do on March 6th if a no vote prevails? Which personally, I hope a no vote prevails. But what is the city going to do? We're going to go, go click into overdrive at 8.30, 9 o'clock when the, when the votes come in it says no. We're going to go crazy and go, ah, the, the world's ending. The sky is falling. What's happening? No, you can't do that. They should be working on a plan B right now. They should be working on a plan C right now. But this is where your money goes. This is where that 50% pay raise is going that Mary Sahadi got. 50% pay raise and she has no plan. She has no plan. And her numbers keep changing. Is this what we're paying for? And they keep quoting towns, cities and towns that are and I wouldn't even say cities, they're quoting towns on what happened with towns throughout the Commonwealth and when they rejected it. Well, they were towns. They're smaller than we are. So what's happening with those places? They are much smaller than we are, and as such, they can't afford to do this maybe on their own. But we're bigger. We should be able to afford it. And my, our co-host has finally joined us. Hello, Chipper. Oh, God. You sounded like crap, Chip. I do. I feel like it, too. I'm sorry. Uh, you're, only 15, <coughs> oh, you're only 15 minutes late, so. <laughs> well. Uh, Better late than never. I, I don't know today, but uh, it, uh, I don't know what you're talking about. We're, We're talking, talking about, about the piss poor management of the city where we have to go into emergency override. Where we have to go into emergency override if a no vote prevails. Well, you know, uh, again, emergency over. Why is it an emergency? <coughs> uh, 
Yeah. It's an emergency because they didn't prepare. That's exactly what I said. And, and you know, they wanted to know, I think that's, Paul wanted to know, we had our little forum. He said, what are we talking about Wayland for? What are we talking about Amherst for? Because they had a complete and comprehensive financial plan. They looked at it with a debt exclusion, without a debt exclusion. And I know Radio Pravda this morning, we saw Rick, Rick, the spin master, uh, was getting in at Mary Sahadi said a debt override isn't a proposition to override. Well, I showed you on the Wayland, it, every page said debt exclusion, debt exclusion, debt exclusion. And then on the page with the pros and cons, it said override because it's a form of override. They're playing a semantic game with you. They're playing semantics. It's not an override. Well, yeah, you're right. It's not called an override because an override permanently places that into your levy and then it goes on from there. But it's a form of override. Massachusetts state law, Proposition Two and a Half, tells you you can only you can only assess taxes up to two and a half percent. In order to do that, in order to uh, to tax more than that, you have to have some form that allows you to override that law. Debt exclusion is an override. And they'll say, ah, oh, no, it's temporary, it doesn't go in. Well, guess what? It's not temporary. You're going to get a 30-year 30 30 debt exclusion on a 40-year school. So guess what we'll be doing in 30 years? Preparing for another debt override. Because once you open this, this bond door and let the horse out, we'll never build another school without burdening the taxpayers in and above their two and a half. So, you know, all this propaganda, and it will, it will set off an emergency process. Why? Because they didn't plan. He, and, and our superintendents are not considered a possibility. Voters may, may vote that down. Uh, and is that number correct? What, what, what? Okay. Oh, see, they manipulate figures all the time because now... Now it's a $58.5 million debt exclusion because they're, they're reducing the $40 million they're taking. But they're remember, giving us out of their standard. And I said that before you showed up, that it's a $98.5 million debt exclusion. $98.5 million. You're a little low, CJ. It's a $98.5 million debt exclusion. Yeah. Nine, and, and with interest, it's an $81 million. $181. hundred. I'm sorry, $181 million. $181 million. $181 million. So, you know, talk about, talk about car salesmen. Right. And I can put you in his car for 200 bucks a month for the next 200 years. Right. So, and the thing is, is that the $40 million isn't even a guarantee. That's right. It's not a guarantee. It's a projection. Yeah. And we know what her projections are like already. Exactly, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so much so they couldn't even afford postage stamps. And, and the thing that disturbs me is she just got a $40,000 pay raise. 50% pay increase. And, and they're talking, why didn't they have, you know, they gave you a couple of things that you make on your computer at home and run them off on your printer in about five minutes. They gave them that stuff. And you look at the Whalen and the Amherst projection, actually the, the, Amherst one, one of the early, one of the, one of the first pages actually explains the entire process of debt exclusion, override, so the people will know, and the financial, and the city council will know. And they did a comprehensive document, impact studies and how it affects the, the bond rating, Moody's. But did Fall River? No. Again, the Fall River way, they're gonna, we're going to do it their way. Or they're going to say, oh, we're in a crisis. The EPA will come down to find us. This will happen. That will happen. It's always 11th hour crap. So my response to that is it should not 
set off an emergency process. That process should have been part of the consideration right out of the get-go, because that's what you do. You know, when you go to an arbitration, I remember during a forum he said, oh, when you negotiated, uh, you, know, you, you, you know, you didn't look for a pay cut, but that's not true. When I negotiated, the first thing I did was check the ability to pay at a city. That's why we, I beat them twice in arbitration, because the first thing you have to prove, no matter how reasonable your demands are, is that the city has the ability to pay what you're asking for. So I did. And the other thing is, there were numerous years when the city wasn't broke, but it didn't have enough money, that every union in this city at some point in time took a zero for a year, sometimes for two years. That's the reason that this city, at those times, didn't have to raise taxes every year. They didn't have to, you know, and they didn't, you know, the thing is that, you know, this is all smoke and mirrors and semantics. Mary Sahadi says it isn't a two and a half override. Well, Mary, if you can tax more than a two and a half statutory limit, explain to me if that isn't an override. <coughs> you can call, you know, you, if it quacks like a duck and it walks like a duck, you can call it a debt exclusion all you want. It's still a duck. Quack, it's, quack. it's a form of overriding the constraints of proposition two and a half and the rest of the stuff is and it really disturbs me look I expect them to play games but when they're reporting on this from Radio Pravda like you know and 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 giving her you know her it's not a dead it's not an override it's not an override yes it is we're gonna be taxed more than two and a half Semantics, that is, that is really, really poor uh, journalism and, and media. But, you, you know, know, the Herald News is just as guilty because the Herald News keeps saying it's a $58.5 million or 58.5 of 98.5. No, it's $98.5 million. That's what the taxpayer is responsible for. Well, if, the, if their Mary projection... Sahadi, and Mary Sahadi said very clearly, the city, city can at any time require the taxpayer to pay you the, the full freight, 100% of yeah. the bond. And Therefore, by, it's a $98.5 million or more override. And by the way, that $40 million that they're going to put in, whose money is that? That's our money anyhow, oh, so we're oh, still paying yeah. it. Uh, thank you for clarifying that. <laughs> oh, well, it, I figured the clarity hadn't kicked it, in yet. It's, it's, <laughs> it's you, know, you know, but they make the figure lower, like the car salesman. Get in the car, I'll, give it, I'll, I'll put you in this car for 200 bucks a month, and then when I repossess it in six months and sell it to some other, some other fool, listen, the only people who make these kind of decisions are people who can't afford it. So they keep telling us how great the city is financially. They give out all these pay raises to only certain people. And they keep telling us, but we need this. We have to have this. And if not, it will set off an emergency process. By the way, you know the old how many P's? Poor planning promotes piss poor performance. performance. The six P's. So that's it. You don't plan. Now, they only plan one way. Gouge the taxpayer. That was their plan. It's always their plan. Tax and spend, bond, tax and spend. Remember, it's your job. It's your mission in life to give them every dime you got in taxes. Because remember... If you can't afford the taxes, move to Russia. That's why we have all these nice buildings in, 
in, in the United the States the because office. of our taxes. But this is, a, this is an awesome opportunity for the city to really build a, a, a state-of-the-art building on a cost that's reasonable, as this councilman said, that's $3,000 across 30 years. Come on, we got to save up. This is a cost of being American. you got to do it. It's democracy. You, wanna, you don't want to pay those prices? Go someplace like Russia where they don't have, you know, uh, uh, tax-funded... Uh, 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 <laughs> well, I hate to tell Mr. Malone, but have you ever seen pictures of Moscow and St. Petersburg? The buildings there are absolutely gorgeous. And remember, I mean, that, that Byzantine architecture they've got there, it's just... When, it, when, you look at the, when you look at pictures of Moscow and St. Petersburg, and most of the big cities are like that, they have that, they have that spectacular old European, old world architecture. I mean, come on. I hate to tell you this, but obviously you've never and, even seen pictures of Russia. Right, they got and, some pretty nice buildings in and Russia. And in that quote, he's saying that they don't have publicly funded parcels or buildings. That, their name used to be the United Socialist Soviet Republic. Yeah. Socialism. That means the people pay for everything. The people share everything. That's what socialism is. So guess what? You, you need to go back to school, Dr. Malone. <laughs> yeah, the Union of Soviet Socialist Republic. That's it. The United, U, back in the USSR. That's right. You don't know how lucky you are, boy. But, but that's the thing. The thing is that Listen, this is all, you know what this is? Because, again, the power brokers and the money men in Fall River have decided how it's going to be and how they're going to finance it. And the hell with the poor people, the hell with the people who have to worry about their rent. Damn the torpedoes, full speed ahead. And as soon as it looks like people are paying attention and might not vote this in, we start preying on their panic. Oh, God, we know it. Oh, we'll set off an emergency process. Well, this is funny. Dave, you know, our viewer, Dave, who yeah. watches us regularly, he turns around and says, he, la he goes, laughing my off. Yeah. That, 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 that's all, folks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I mean, you know, that's the American way. I hate to tell Dr. Malone that, too, uh, but it's not the American way. No. Well, Not the American way. We did, uh, the, the Income Tax Act wasn't passed by the federal government until 1913. Do the math. Well, here's the, here's the kicker. You know, the, you know that Ind Industrial Park Association? Yeah. Well, you know, they're, they're afraid. They're gonna, they're, some of them, like Carl Hetzler, are former residents. This is the same person who asked to shift the tax burden. That's right. He says, I'm a voter in Fall River. I will vote for the new high school. But what bothers me is that the burden of paying for it is not distributed evenly. He wants it to be evenly distributed. He wants the residential taxpayer to pay even more money. Yeah, well, you know, he doesn't want to pay any taxes. He's still, he's still trying to figure out he, how he can be like Amazon and get a tiff. He wants to pay for zero million taxes. Dollars, yeah. He wants to pay zero like all businesses do. Because guess what? That's, that is the American way now, and it's unfortunate. That wasn't the American way. The American way was our forefathers. No one disliked taxes more than Thomas Jefferson. Uh, they all disliked taxes. If I remember correctly, this nation was started, and they had a revolution over taxation. A T-tax. The T-tax, that's right. And it was started over, attack, over taxes. And we had virtually no tax, no direct tax until about 1916. In 1913, they passed the act. And about 1916, I believe, they got the, they got the, 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 they began direct taxation. Why? Because businessmen in the Industrial Revolution figured out a way to get the poor people to subsidize them all. So, sorry I was late, but uh, I was in a meeting. Hey, it happens, you know. I, I turned around and told him the stuff flies at the government center. And I feel like, I, and, and even though I, that's how much I really like being here and, and 
and giving you guys the the, the, the real the real truth. CJ and I follow the money or lack thereof. And we'll see you Wednesday. And remember, tomorrow in Westport, they're voting on their override. Have a great day. We'll see you on Wednesday.